Looks like Monday's about to bring us some very nice Bitcoin price action. Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Kiddo Cave. Wish you a very happy and healthy start to your uh, money no Monday morning over here from a very dreary and overcast Helsinki, Finland. I am uh, dealing with a lack of sleep, so forgive my ignorance with all the word choices that I have today. And I'll probably do a little bit of a shorter video, but I really want to focus on the shorter term time frames as we did hit our downside target from yesterday, right around the 8500 dish mark now kind of bouncing up a little bit. So what's next for Bitcoin as the new week kind of gets going, which is likely going to be catalyzed by traditional markets open up at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. So like about eight, eight ish hours from now, we should be seeing some very nice action. So with that, so with that in mind, I do want to prepare for the day and uh, always wish you well as well. And also, oh, I won't be on Twitch today or likely tomorrow. I'm really hoping for some uh, for some like some very good news from my doctor, but it's going to be it's going to require me to set up this next day and tomorrow so that hopefully after that I can be back on with no restraints or anything like that and then perhaps uh, if if it even is good enough as what it maybe could be maybe i just jinxed myself and fuck it all up uh but maybe a 24-hour stream uh in the not so distant future okay anyways uh, uh, uh other than that we are looking at the crown Chain application right here it is 100 free it can be had for yours at app.crowntrain.net for 0, 0.00 dollars and what do we see here we see something of uh we see something of of of, of interest and that is the bitcoin dominance we've been bullish on that for a while and we're starting to see it really follow through to that that 66% mark, which is actually, I believe, at one of the critical points for the weekly, which we'll, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. Um, but other than that, all the top end metrics are more or less the same. The open interest is right on the precipice of really confirming the next sort of phase in this mark cycle, which I do think that we're going to get clarity on the situation probably by the end of this, uh, probably by the end of this next weekly. Uh, also kind of in line with the halving date as well. I believe it's about seven or eight days away from today. Uh, so that is all going to be some fun stuff to, to kind of uh, mention masturbate about anyways um we do see that crypto fear and greed index is still hanging out uh, out around the semi-neutral zone we're at the top end of the fearful zone if we go just one point higher to a 45 as we saw yesterday it'll actually be neutral once again but still technically speaking the market is more on the fearful side than not after more than 2xing off the lows off the four thousand dollar low all the way up to you know 9400 ish region almost 9500 in some cases so to me, that's still of interest um, as we kind of keep an eye on this. But still, I have not seen a major or, or we still have not confirmed like the next major phase. So with that in mind, let's go check out the good old price action charts. And like I said, uh, if you want more long term analysis, definitely go check out the video that I uploaded yesterday in the long term analysis playlist. I do one of those videos each and every Sunday. Um, and then so during the weeks, you know, realistically, those things don't really change around all that often. So I want to use this to focus on the low term time frames of which we did. We did hit our downside target. I did say that if we tick below 8900 low yesterday or especially close a four hour delta below 8800 which both obviously happened obviously the 8900 take coming coming a lot sooner uh there would be another 400 dollars moves or very very likely i should say i really dislike using that like there would be like you know discrete or sorry concrete language like that you just it can't be done in trading anyone who's been trading long enough knows that and what's going on here well we did hit our bottom side blue box target right here now bouncing off in the uh in the early morning hours for us in the eastern european hemisphere and what's next essentially well, I want to check out the momentum oscillators and uh, and see what we can come up with. So looking at four hour stokes, we are headed downwards. And by the way, uh, while there is a trend line kind of, you know, governor on a low thus far, I don't really trust it all that much. What I trust more is the four hour jewel, which actually did give a pretty damn good sell signal uh, yesterday. Um, now, credit to the people who actually took this one. This one was coming in. Where exactly did it come in? It come in, It came in right here uh, preeminently at like 91.50 and then gets confirmed at 90.50 ish region right here as it turns down. So 90.50 all the way to where we are right now. It's $500 move or a little bit more than $500 move, which at this price point is, well, what like a six seven percent move perhaps and to me has that mostly played out? I think the easy part of that has played out. We also saw some bearish divergence on the 12 hour uh, uh, get going as well as we do have one, two, three strikes, one high, two high, three high, and one, two, three strikes right here. And now you're out and probably coming back down a little bit lower overall, I would say. But that's not the full picture because the full picture, of course, like I said, is, is really encompassing the long term analysis from yesterday. But I would like to reference a 12 hour right here because we actually are going to be having, or sorry, we're not going to be having, we do have a golden cross that is confirmed 
confirmed between the green and the purple that's 55 and the 200 historically speaking that's been pretty damn good for bitcoin but there's a very specific signature when we get that or sorry that we get with price action alongside with this and while it has produced some absolutely uh, amazing gains in the past as you can see right here getting this golden cross um going all the way from essentially 8300 to ten and a half thousand a two thousand dollar run at, um you know from top to or bottom to top i suppose uh we do initially kind of come down and test across as you typically do so for the for the people in the ta program definitely reference the uh the ema module as that's a, as that's the one's gonna that's gonna directly um reference this sort of uh, interplay and going back in the in the history of time we do see that bitcoin you know does like to do that historically speaking last golden cross that we see right around here we do get the golden cross on this first major move to the upside however bitcoin spends some time going sideways reconsolidating reaccumulating test 55 and then boom big move to the upside so you know that if you, you know if you go back further in time to the to the last 2014 to 20, 2015 before one before that which i won't do right now because i don't want to go over too much high time time frame type stuff you'll find something similar as well anyways what are we looking at right here well we are looking at you know that pullback so i do want to state that um in both traditional markets and bitcoin i have been saying over the last few or or, or, or over the weekend that while i'm not necessarily bearish overall meaning that um you know i'm looking for like new lows to be put in or anything like that i do think that this next week of price action is likely going to be testing some downside bitcoin kind of already getting there although i do think that it likely has more over time i do think that we probably will come back down and test a low eight thousands upper seven thousands um, before it's all said and done and probably also bounce pretty pretty heftily there as well but as far as you know level to level goes it's still pretty much the same thing as what we looked at yesterday if we do get a break below our current low at about 8520 or 8530 i suppose i officially have it at 8530 if you want to call it exactly there um then yes i would look for another extension actually much lower at you know <laughs> much lower at least 8400 no of course of, of course more uh, more low than that i do think that we'd be coming down to at the very least or what have I been saying? I've been saying down around here, actually, down towards about 7,900. Would the higher term time frames confirm that? Um, yeah, we do have a lot. We we do have a lot of in, intersecting in that region, especially the weekly as well, which actually did just cross the 21 to the, uh, to the upside of the 55. Again, for the people in the in the TA program, keep an eye on that one. Uh, but I would be looking for it to be retested as well. And then this this weekend, this next weekly close should confirm either a nice launch pad or a massive reversal, of which I bet both are equally as as uh, as you know as enjoyable for the traders out there, but for the Moon Boys and the Doom Boys. Boys, that that statement probably just pisses you off because you want to know spoon it baby where's my fucking spoon where are we going baby i need to know right now crown and if you're fucking wrong then i'm gonna leave a mean con or i don't know I, whatever whatever people want to do it's all good man um i understand it's the internet anyways uh looking at this right here and coming from the perspective of a trader here i would say that yes if we do break below about 8500 especially on a four hour total closure i would be looking for extension overall to the 7900 ish level in line with the weekly um in line with the weekly moving averages which i do like uh however as it stands right now, I wouldn't necessarily be jumping the gun for that because I do think that we're going to play out a short-term time frame balance here before it's all said and done. The reason why I say that is because all lower-term time frame momentum oscillators are, well, they're actually not so bad right here. Four-hour stokes have plenty of room to go, as you can see. Three-hour stokes are starting to curl back up. And do we have a trend line there? No, nope, I wouldn't necessarily say so, but I'm curious what the two-hour show. They're down in the same region as the three-hour, actually not as uh, not not looking as good as the three-hour, funnily enough, and hourly kind of down in the same region as well. So let's see what our reverse stoke indicator cross in, uh, says uh, what you know essentially what does Bitcoin have to hold for um, for price to kind of bounce here so it's looking like we do or sorry we will remain um, in a downside posture as long as Bitcoin is below about 8600 on the hourly on the buy hourly 87 so that's obviously higher three hour is 8640 so I like how it's kind of cut, cutting it right in the middle and then four hours way up there it's it remains down as long as we're below 9000 so uh, the way that I look at this is that we're likely to come back down and grind out the lower blue box you know maybe get a wick down to uh maybe you know maybe get a wick down to like 84 50 ish region 8400 ish region but i don't necessarily uh, feel like we have the momentum to break it um uh today i, I do think that it's going to play out a little bit more of a bounce here and then potentially a little bit later on in the week i actually do think that we will come down in line with traditional markets the question is you know I, I think that we probably play out a bounce, uh, you know, a short term time frame bounce first. So I have to be very, 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 very deliberately clear with the way that I differentiate these time frames. Very short term probably does come down a little bit more. 
I would be looking for probably probably move into like 84, 84, 50 ish region. But as long as we don't close any four hour dildos below, let's call 8,500, just be a little more conservative there. Um, I do think that uh, we will play out a short term uh, time frame bounce from that, you know, from that next test. And then probably later on this week, we do see a move down to test somewhere around this blue box right here. Again, given that Bitcoin actually does close at the very least a four hour dildo below about 8,500, we'll call it. And you know, what? I'm actually going to move this down to be a little more conservative because I know that some people just like some people just look at this to copy this which is kind of funny uh, well it, I mean it should accurately be there actually so you know what I'll leave it there but to be more um, to be more conservative because I do think that it is warranted in this uh, in this current environment um, I would be looking for that to happen so yes by the way uh, that 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 uh, that presumed uh, sending triangle that we we're looking at yesterday did obviously break to the downside that's why we always say that when it comes to formations it's not like a done deal just because you have a, like an inverted head and shoulders for example that it's always going to go up no when it just it just gives you a statistical chance a statistical likelihood statistical edge that it will move in that direction but the same sort of ports, supports and resistances do still align with the opposite look and that's exactly what we got so at the end of the day you know price level is more important and that's exactly why i, I place the importance on them rather than just like you know arbitrary patterns and whatnot because you know, more often than not, or sorry, well, not necessarily more often than not, because that would kind of destroy the 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 whole understanding of a statistical edge. Uh, but but you know, but it certainly can you know work the other way. Again, if you have if you have like a hit rate of sixty nine percent, well, for thirty one percent of that, it's going to go the other way, of course, and that's pretty damn you know pretty damning overall anyways um to the upside uh a little bit a little bit easier here as long as bitcoin is below this uh this 9100 or sorry even just 9000 ish region i don't see this as reaccumulation in the short term time frames however if bitcoin did move back above 9000 ish region i would look for another test overall to 9300 ish region that's where the medium time frames uh, start to get going once again and i would look for extension all the way up to uh 9600 if 9300 is broken above on a on at the very least a two hour dildo closure preferably a four hour there but you know setting up for another uh 400 run to the top set of resistances of basically the whole kit and caboodle here as it stands or i, I shouldn't say that you know putting a little bit too much uh too much importance on it but a, a plethora of things kind of aligning with this region for our higher term time frame resistance which really does open up the gateways or the stairway to heaven if you do want to uh if you do want to play the upside in the way that i look at it so we do see that the 618 Fibonacci retracement comes in this region from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the last run from 14,000 of where we kind of uh, bottomed out more recently or sorry this one goes all the way down to our, our this 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 low over here I'm, I'm referring to 2019 uh just to be deliberately clear uh also the same order block that we have kind of coming in from this last breakdown in late February and also the last major spike high that we had in this fake out in uh in late October so I really like that from a historical standpoint probably better seen on a weekly as you can see um and, uh, and as long as we're below there or sorry and also so I completely forgot this one as well. Just as important, although I don't really, you know, care for it as as much as the horizontal. But the diagonal coming in from our fourteen thousand dollar high, getting all the highs in between, then also correlated with six one eight. And if we did throw on, if if we do throw on the volume profile, you can see that there is some interest in this region as well. After kind of showing a little bit of a lack or a volume vacuum, if you want to call it that, uh, in between about you know ninety, uh, we'll, we'll call it like ninety three hundred to ninety seven, ninety eight hundred ish region. So I do like all those things coinciding with each other. So Bitcoin did take the leg up, which I. I don't think that is doing right now. I, I think that is going to play out some, you know, some some midterm downside before anything else. Um, uh, you know, I would be targeting that area, and that's when the higher term time frames really do start to switch around uh, above. You know, uh, uh, you know, on a daily total closure anywhere above, let's call it 9,700, where all those points coincide with each other. So if we did actually uh, break back above there, I would look for I would look for extension at the very least to 10,500, um, and likely, you know, you know, likely a short term pullback from there, and then continuation on to the 11,500 ish region, of which that's where that's where the that's where the very high term time frame picture changes. Again, I, I'm not going to go into too much detail here but anywhere above there that's a humongous change in macro behavior as that's the major area that bitcoin's gotten rejected from going all the way back to january 2018 february 2018 twice uh july 2019 and august uh august in 2019 as well also 786 fibonacci tracement which bitcoin actually really does like to play off of on the macro here and um and and, and again from a volume uh, from a volume uh, profile perspective you can see that it's just complete change of behavior above this level right here there's there's absolutely nothing doing above there no one's done business above there essentially so bitcoin can really start to fly anyways 
off the higher term time frames for the love of fucking God onto the lower term time frames for the love of fucking God. <laughs> it's very rarely do I say something like that. Um, but what, you know, what are we doing right now? Um, let's go check out probabilities. Actually, like I said, this video might be a little bit on the shorter side because why not? Um, looking at it right here. Let me just make sure that I have all of the settings proper. Okay. So let's see, what are the ranges that we want to use for the short term? Well, short term, I'd be looking at 85 to the downside. So we can use this right here to the upside. What do I want to use there? Well, you know, the only one that really makes sense to me is getting back above 9,000, but that's obviously way, you know, well, well and far away. That's 400 bucks from our current price point. So almost a 5% move. Um, but I guess if that's the only one that really makes sense, I, you know, I could use a lower one uh, for like very, very short term time frame moves, but I, I just don't think that that's appropriate right here. So I just want to show the probability of actually breaking the trend on the short term back to the upside essentially is what I'm looking at. And for the downside, that actually does lead to a pretty damn good move um, as I'd be targeting another move like 500 to $600 lower to about 7,900, 7,800 ish maybe. Uh, so let's see what it look, let's see what it shows right here. We're looking at a daily, by the way, showing a little bit under 20% for the upside upside probability above 9,000 and about 40 and a half percent for the downside probability. This is on the next daily, daily total close, by the way. And what we can do on top of that is we can actually lower the time frame so that we can see the next four hour delta closure, which I think is going to be a little more appropriate to a lower term time frame like this. That you know, when we're looking at low term time frame range, it makes more sense. And what do we see here? We do see that the upside target probability relatively low in comparison to the to the downside, six and a half percent versus thirty three and a third percent. And now we're really starting to see the probabilities of the downside switch on not just on the lower term time frames, but on the uh, you know on the medium and semi higher term time frames as well, where, which was a clear or sorry a, a a, a massive differential between what we've seen over the past few weeks when the upside probabilities were consistently higher pretty much each and every day. Um, so, you know, it does seem like it's time, uh, as I've been saying, for a little bit of a pullback here, although I don't want to represent it like that because it just sounds like I'm becoming fucking arrogant and maybe I am and maybe I do need to be called out. But um, but hopefully I can catch myself before that happens. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's see. So, uh, what else do we want to talk about here? Let's go. Let's go look at traditional markets because I think that they're much more interesting than Bitcoin right now. And and, and traditional markets showing that we're likely going to bounce off this off this level, off the eighty five fifty ish level for Nasdaq futures, and it's probably going to be like twenty. 800 or 280 for 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 e mini futures i would be looking for a little bit of a range to be established between the 21 85 50 and this last little kind of breakdown area right here at about 88 50 ish region but ultimately i do think that this is likely to likely to test some downside this week as well more so than what we've seen already uh you know just without looking at it probably the 10 simple on the weekly uh, is 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 about where i'd be looking and yeah, around 8150-ish region overall, I think that that would be a pretty obvious buy for at the very least a med or, or, or short term and probably medium term bounce and perhaps even full and reversal. As I've been saying for a while, I do believe that the low for traditional markets is in, um, but I but that doesn't mean that I don't think that there's going to be be downside. I do think that there's going to be downside and probably even this week and maybe may, you know maybe even this month as I do think that there's going to be a nice you know you know nice move um, you know nice move down at probably by the time that most American states start to reopen after, you know, this whole coronavirus thing is kind of getting going. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be opposite what you think, right? You know, it's like, oh, states, states are opening back up. Let's dump it. <laughs> and, you know, and when, and when, and when everything, you know, all the bad news is coming out, you know, it's, what are we doing? We're pumping. Well, it's because the market's pricing in things 30, 30 years away, not fucking today, not tomorrow, but 30 years away and those things, you know, obviously get front ran. Um, but, you know, how low could we go here? Well, I think the better one to be looking at is probably E-mini e futures for SPY. And, uh, and this one makes a little bit more sense to me as well. I'd say anywhere between 265 and 270 um, is likely going to be the next big bounce. Uh, but is it possible that we go lower? I see. So so here, here here's where I start to fall apart a little bit. Um, in the very short term time frames, I do think that it's going to pop back up probably as much as like 285, so, you know, something like that um, to open up the day. But I do think that uh, probably 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 does get a rejection there. And as long as we are closing daily dollars below 289 or 282, is it 288 and a half? I, I think it's more like 288 and a half, actually. Um, you could all say like a 289 if you want to be super conservative. I do think that uh, that's that's very likely to get rejected and we will come down and at the very least test like 270 probably 265 i do think that that's that's the next area that that we could find a major low in as 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 shown by this alert right here let me actually i don't even have a horizontal put in there i don't i guess it didn't save from yesterday um 
that'd be the next area that I look for, you know, at the least a bounce or, or, or at least a bounce, perhaps even reversal. And then I do think that that area probably would be a little bit premature to have a reversal on just, you know, going, going level to level here. I would say that uh, likely, you know, more likely in the mid to low 260s. And then if that area does fail, I'd be looking down here towards the 250 uh, ish region. Um, so, you know, small incremental steps, but uh, you can imagine that if, you know, if, if traditional marks start to turn down around, you're going to see the news cycle turn back to, holy fuck, it's worse in 20 or 1929 this is the great depression times fucking a billion there's no hope everyone's gonna fucking die and the world's going to shit so you know what do you think's gonna happen well probably another major low is going to be put in i do think that it's very relevant to say that that this is uh, the more and more that i look at the, the more and more that i study it i do think that the low is in we have a volume climax that hasn't really been seen ever since you know realistically like 2008 2009 in fact how what were we kind of doing over there if we want to get granular with this uh 20 million was printed on this on this week or sorry uh yeah, 20, 25 million was printed on this on this weekly total right here, um, right around the low. Yes, we do go a little bit lower after that, but the low is you know more or less in. Uh, right in over here, we have 22 uh, million printed on the low as well. So is that capitulation volume? Historically speaking, it's you know it's it's in it's in line. Whoops, I am um, I'm on the wrong chart now. Uh, not only that, but historical volatility percentile, which I think is, is is a better metric for this. We see the weekly get red redder than the devil's dick, and that is typically indicative of at the very least a a a long term term reversal point and usually a macro reversal point you know comparing it with this last major spike right here in December 2018 then we have this guy right in over here this spike low right here um, uh, I think about a year or yeah yeah about a year prior to that then this guy right here on this major low this guy right here on this major low this guy on here like here or, or on here on this major low this guy right here on this major low or that one also a macro low uh, this guy right here another macro low as you can see as well that's actually 2008 2009 and if we go back to 2000s you know the old dot-com bubble uh, you have another major major macro low being put in right here while the historical volatility percentile on the weekly it gets incredibly incredibly um, um, red, which to me is again indicative of a good long-term reverse point. I mean, we've already got a good a good move off the lows here. I do think that it's going to contract a little bit. We'll probably come back down somewhere around the moving average or a little bit below the moving average from a volatility perspective on the weekly, and then probably you know maybe get like a u-shaped bottom or something like that can i be wrong in that yes absolutely i'm wrong on shit all the fucking time you don't want my opinion on things but going level by level if we do break back down below about 245 240 ish region then yeah i would be looking for new lows or at the very least a retest of the prior low and 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 then you know we could probably target moves down towards like 29 or sorry uh uh what like 190 190 ish region would be the next level that i look towards um as far as spy goes so so again you know I, I i'm just going level by level there pretty damn simple stuff and obviously the most the most bullish thing i could do right now is take out last week's high tonight uh, two, uh 295 essentially and then i'd initiate a move back up to like 310 315 but i don't think that that's what's happening right now i think that we're going to play out a little bit of a short-term uh bouncy bounce here probably back up to this level somewhere right around like 280 or sorry 285 ish region uh, assuming that there's another rejection right there, I would be then preparing for some downside to the to to the aforementioned levels like 270, um, probably for a short term bounce, and then and then a legitimate plant chance down around the like low 260s. Um, and if that one fails, then I'd be then I'd be looking at 250. And if that one fails, then I'd be going down to uh, to 240 or or 245 ish region. That's where that's where the higher term time frame picture really does start to change around. But again, for perspective, um, looking at the monthly, I don't really have any major major issue, issues with the monthly here. Um, you know, I do think that it can come. I mean, it could come all the way down to 260, and we'd just be testing the the uh, the 55. Last month, we actually even did close above the uh, the 21 expansion moving average as well. So my my rule is, I'm not long term bearish on anything that's closing monthly dildos above the 21. Doesn't mean that it can't close below here. Um, uh, but it's really it's really when it starts opening and closing below when it starts to become a long-term issue and right now uh, I feel like we're just gonna be playing out of range probably during the month of May between 260 and, and where we are right now uh, maybe even as high as like 290 295 region but uh, but I think it's gonna be a little bit of a lackluster month and gonna really bore most people to death uh, more than anything <laughs> which fair enough let's go see how Japan's doing today they are down already almost three percent so yes uh, you know play you know kind of playing out the same reversal that we saw from friday on traditional markets which again this is i i do want i do want to directly um uh address this as well so a lot of people uh <laughs> a lot of people there were some interesting comments that i received and some interesting messages that i received some 
maybe you could even construe as rude. Uh, but I try to, you know, I, I try to not take it, not, you know, not just what I try to do if I'm, if I've got like a good night of sleep is I try to be, if, is I try to tell myself this person's just trying to share some information. That's all. And they're maybe just a little bit uh, too excited about this. And that's why it comes off like this. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's what's going on. Or maybe they're just an asshole. Who knows? Uh, but, but, but a lot of people were looking at uh, Friday's price action between traditional markets and Bitcoin action as, as proof that the bifurcation has, ha has happened. The decoupling has happened and one's going up and one's going out. Okay. First, off, that'd be negative fucking correlation jesus christ and then more importantly hey a 10-year fucking trend does not get broken in one day <laughs> or two days for that matter or fucking seven days i mean at the very least i need to see a weekly reversal on or sorry a a, a weekly or sorry a different weekly trend confirmed on both assets as they're trending at the same time or maybe not the same time but over like you know a month or two um Per, and again, on a weekly, at the very least, between Bitcoin and traditional markets, do you see any sort of a difference between the between the weekly trend here? Between uh, sorry, well, this is uh, Japan. Uh, do you see any difference between the weekly trend here on um, on E-mini futures versus Bitcoin? No, they're both in downtrends, and they've been both in downtrends for a little bit of time on the weekly. On a monthly, they're both in uptrends, and they have been for essentially the last 10 years so there you go anyways um my point is is that you know don't be too quick to call a 10-year trend over uh with literally no new points of information not only that but i mean we obviously have some hidden hidden bearish divergence here between this point and this point probably good enough to bring it back down to the low 8000s i do think uh, a little bit later and also we do have regular bearish divergence on daily rsi right here so typically speaking i do like to target somewhere around the 21 at the very least a 10 simple um, which we've kind of already kind of hit down to already but uh, i do think that it's going to get an another formal swipe a little bit later probably another bounce there and then come down a little bit later this week and test around the low 8000s upper 7000s and and then we'll and then we'll decide from there. You know, is it all just a massive fake out before another me mega move down, or is it or 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 is it the next major buy opportunity before you know an absolute monstrous green dildo to ten thousand and beyond? I you know I'd actually go with the I'd actually go with the latter as it is right now, just because the weekly um, is showing signs of of potential long term reversal here. Um, you know, looking at the weekly RSI, especially on CMEs, we do see this, which I, I said I wouldn't talk about long term stuff here, but this is probably the, the the last long-term stuff that I'll speak about. And we do see a nice uh, falling wedge over a very long period of time, actually going all the way back almost a year ago now to, to June of 2019. So this one's been baking for a long time. I, I do think that this that this test right here is going to get rejected. We probably come back down to the neutral zone. And then, you know, if, if you know if you see it blast off again, that should be a pretty damn big signal. signal. Typically you do get about three tests. And then, and then on the fourth one, if it is going to break, it is going to break. Um, but uh, but according to probabilities, you know, not not very likely today. And this is probably going to take a little bit of time between, you know, the next couple of weeks, probably sometime this month, uh, if that is going to play out like that. Weekly jewel on CME is bouncing off, giving you a hodl, your long signal. I wouldn't necessarily say that that's like the most obvious one of all time. And I'd really like to see a lot more price action information. But going over here to stamp. Kind of similar thing it's it's not it's not great it's not perfect um you know the obvious signal was the was the daily hotter your long signal on um on the jewel for cmes right here calling it on the 20th of april and then confirming it on the 21st of april so that was in the sixth out in the upper six thousands it looks like so i like that um you know long term but you know as you know at you know as it looks to me like right you know right now very 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 short term pro probably another another swipe of the lows a little bit lower, most likely. Then I'd be looking for a short-term bounce somewhere off the uh, 8450-ish level, and then I'd look for you know I, I don't really have any bounce targets for something like that. You know maybe maybe even back up as much as 9,000. Although I do think that you know 80. 87, 88 probably makes a little bit more sense. And then I'd be looking for the higher term time frames to take over once again. Looking at the 12 hour stokes, they are down and they will remain down as long as Bitcoin price action is below 89.50. So that's a good pivot point going forwards. And I would remain, you know, sort of sort of looking for that downside to play out and test these major levels. Um, and and likely look for an opportunity in the upper 7,000s. Uh, daily, same sort of thing here as well. Daily, daily Stokes down and nose diving. They do have a nice support trend line coming in somewhere here. Or sorry, well, this more aggressive one right here. Let me get rid of this one because it's not relevant. Uh, this one right here at the edge of the bullish control zone. 
that one probably does get ex does get, does get respected initially, but I don't think that'll get anything. You know, I don't think that'll get more follow through. Uh, and then it, and then if and then if and when it does break down, and look for a test down here, which would be right around the bearish control zone. That's where I actually do start to think that we could find another you know another another nice low. Um, other than that, uh, didn't really even look at 12 hour stock volatility percentile, but it's still it's still expanding here, so that's good. Um, uh, you know, overall, as long as it's above the moving average, I do look at this move as still as still uh, in, in in the expansion phase alongside open interest still kind of hanging around this region right here. I want to see like a massive spike up. I want to see that get red. I want to see open interest spike up, you know, 100 million plus um, and, uh, and, 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 and price action follow through. And that would really confirm, you know, the next major change of behavior. But for right now, it still looks like more of the same. We even have a little bit of a head and shoulders on the 12. Well, not really. Sorry. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have mentioned that. It's, it's just not true. Um, is there anything else that I'm missing here that I haven't already said? This video is already 30 minutes long, probably 30 minutes too long for some people. But that's okay. I make this for the TA nerds out there, baby. Myself being the biggest one of them. Fucking nerd alert. That that uh, that that alert. Just imagine the, the shitcoin police siren ringing in your ears. Anyways, um, I think that pretty much gets it uh, for what I wanted to say uh, to, to quickly wrap it up. I'd be looking at this level to probably get swiped again, probably a little bit lower down to like 84.50 ish region. I do think that Bitcoin's going to try a short term time frame bounce off there. I don't really have any real bounce targets for something like that, just likely not above 9,000. If, if Bitcoin does get back above 9,000 on that bounce, then we would likely have something different going on. And I'd, I'd probably target to move towards 93. And that's when the picture looks a lot better um, for the short and medium term. Uh, long term, still more or less the same as yesterday. Uh, however, if however if I do get a four hour total closure, either below 8,500 or a wick below this spike low right here at about 8,407 on Mexico, and I think it's about the same on all major exchanges, then I would would likely look for uh, extension all the way down to about 7900 ish region give or take you know 50 bucks and that's actually where the long-term support trend line comes in from march 13th uh major 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 dump and uh and if we actually do break down below there that's when this really starts to look like one massive fake out and we'll come all the way back down very likely to the uh low 6000s so that's what you have to look for uh sorry what you know that that's potentially what you have to look forward to if that if that area does break other than that um i'm gonna be signing off now i want to wish you well once again take care and until next time.